Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was uh, in the, the beginning of the day. I was uh, on a thesis defense here, chairman. So we had a PhD student defending his uh, thesis on uh, trying to uh, new physical chemistry concepts for making more efficient uh, Dyson sterilized solar cells. So I, I choose a title to irritate my colleagues. Why chemist, uh, physical chemistry knows everything in principle. But there's a joke in this, because uh, also a joke on us, physical chemists, that we know everything in principle. Uh, which means uh, that some, some of our colleagues will, will say that we don't need to uh, know much. So, this is uh, the classical image of a physical chemist. And uh, uh, there are many jokes on the internet you can see of physical chemistry. Just Google that physical chemistry and images and you will see this, this uh, hip-hop guy who looks pretty brutal going back here in, in the car. And the text says, yeah, I, I understood, and I understood everything at P-Chem class today. This was a good day. So, that's, uh, so there, apparently some people have an image that this is really rocket science. Well, it's not. Uh, when you ask what is physical chemistry, I would say that this is uh, the use in chemistry of physical uh, methods and physical models to describe chemical systems and phenomena. And this means that we often use get uh, knowledge that is of principal character. And when physical chemistry emerged at the end of, of the uh, 1800s, uh, the, most of the chemistry at that time were, was rather descriptive. You start by describing different reactions, and the more knowledge you gain, the more you can uh, de de derive principles. And that gives you a broader understanding. And uh, instead of uh, sorry, trying to generalize your, uh, your knowledge, and uh, some of that g gives you also the possibility to estimate things. And uh, that's also non another uh, funnier uh, word game, so how to estimate your, uh, your surroundings or your, your world. And uh, an estimate has the same connotation of appreciate, hur man uppskattar omvärlden in Swedish. And this is, uh, of course, how to make clever estimates uh, reality check, sometimes we call it. Is this a reasonable value? Is this a reasonable to assume this? And uh, a physicist at the conference, he is, uh, said, okay, challenge me. I can estimate everything. And uh, uh, how many psychiatrists or uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, head shrinks are there uh, practitioners in uh, Chicago? Okay, so I went about doing it and I tried to do the same. So how many piano tuners are in, uh, people are working professionally to tune pianos in Stockholm? I mean, first you say, oh, come on, how should I possibly know that? Well, you need a few reasonable assumptions. But the main point is that we are not interested if you have 374 or 376. We're interested to know if there are 1, 10, 100, or 1,000. We, we are interested in order of magnitude estimates to do that. And, uh, and often in science, it's the same. I also try, how many hairs do you have on the head? If you, if you have a lot of hair. How many hairs do I have on my head? More than 10, yes? Straws, I mean. Is it a million? Is it one billion? Huh. No, but uh, so how do you start? Well, I propose to start. Look at one cent square millimeter. Is it one, 10, or 100 hairs on one square millimeter? One, 10, 100, what do you think? 10, yeah, I think it's a good number. How many square millimeters do I have on my head? How many square millimeters do I have on a square decimeter? And how many of those patches can I get? Yeah, and then you're there. An order of magnitude estimate of the, of the, of the number of hairs on your head. This is, uh, and in chemistry, we can often do the same. We can make reasonable models, reasonable estimates that gives us order of magnitudes to say, is this something I need to think about? Is this something I need to consider? Or not. So physical chemistry focus on principles, but also development of advanced measurements. And I will take uh, a couple of examples from history here in Uppsala. So one of the founding fathers internationally of uh, physical chemistry was uh, Sram Tarenius, who did his uh, thesis here in Uppsala. And the thesis was on theory of electrolyzing solution. When he started, people believed that, uh, that charged particles, ions in solution, were only formed when you draw current through a solution. But he proposed that when you put an acid, it dissociates in a proton and a negative ion. When you put a salt, like sodium chloride, it's a sodium plus and chloride minus. 
very revolutionary at that time. He got the lowest grade on his PhD thesis, so the student today did much better. But eventually he got the Nobel Prize for that work. He developed it a little bit further. Again, very principal knowledge, general for all kinds of electrolyte dissociating. What is most famous for in science is the Arrhenius equation of temperature dependence, many of you have seen. This quantified and explained uh, the physical background behind why you have an activation energy and why the rate constant for chemical reactions follow this very simple formula. And then the first one to calculate global warming due to carbon dioxide emissions, he did. So a broad range uh, of very pr focus, focusing on principles. He uh, wasn't too happy in, in Uppsala with the professors here, so he moved to Stockholm and to the Nobel Institute, and then he was uh, founding Stockholm University College that later became St Stockholm University. Uh, another, the other example of the, when I said development of advanced measurements, we have Theodor Svedberg, who was the first physical chemistry professor here, uh, forming the physical chemistry department. And he was a pioneer in colloidal chemistry and de developed al analytical ultracentrifugation. Ultra this look, may look like an old uh, milk farm, milk di diary uh, factory, but this is actually quite advanced equipment with very fast rotors spinning. And when they broke, it was not fun, there was lots of forces. So this, uh, this, he, this he, he showed that you could separate proteins and this proved that proteins were large molecules that could be uh, where you could weigh the mass of the proteins in a centrifuge. And this laid, laid the foundations on a very strong Uppsala science in the separation, uh, protein separation, macromolecule uh, separation science. So what are we doing today? Uh, one thing that physical chemists is doing is working on complex systems that uh, form when molecules interact with each other. They don't necessarily form covalent bonds, but they form uh, bonds between molecules. And usually the, they are collective. One example are uh, amphiphilic systems, where you have uh, wa uh, water-loving water head groups uh, and uh, fat-loving fat tails. They can, put, uh, they can um, combine in, very di in many different kinds of aggregates. And these are called liposomes. So these particular molecules, schematically shown like this, forms uh, liposomes. We have a bilayer, a layer of two of these molecules, with sticking their heads out on the outside towards the water and uh, forming a, a hydrophobic film in the middle. And this is exactly how our uh, membranes in the body are built up. And inside this membrane, you then have a lot of proteins and other molecules. So these are, uh, these are interesting in itself to see all the different phases that can go through, different structures that can be formed. It's a very highly dynamic structures. And Katarina also studies these as a potential use for delivering drugs in um, in the humans. And this is an electron micrographs when she encapsulates a drug inside these liposomes. Another thing we do, photochemistry. You heard some photochemistry from Roland Lind, the theoretical photochemistry. Chemistry. We do a lot of practical photochemistry also in phys physical chemistry. And in the solar cell group led by Anders and Gerrit, they're working on molecular solar cells. These are alternative then low technology alternatives to silicon solar cells. Silicon factories are really expensive, enormously expensive, multi-billion dollar investments, clean room technology. The Gretzel cell technology is kitchen chemistry. You can do it in very low tech. And uh, they are now coming up to quite respectable efficiency. The, one, the best ones with dyes are up to 14%. And when you have the pearl skype materials, uh, some uh, reports even up to 19, 20% energy conversion efficiency, which is better than the silicon cells today. And you, you see the, these are Gretzel cell uh, dye panels on the house. I think this is in Switzerland. But uh, the group here work more on the fundamental the fundamental understanding and the development of principles, how to uh, m m take this, this technology into, uh, by, into making a step to make it better. And they have, for example, made important contributions to understanding how charge migrates through this nanostructure of titanium dioxide that is decorated with dyes, and uh, how, how you can replace this electrolyte with I minus, I three minus, that wasn't good. So nowadays, this is not the best electrolyte, but instead a cobalt electrolyte that Anders and Harit developed here in Uppsala. John Davidson uh, represents uh, also, uh, let's say, uh, the advanced uh, 
method, use of advanced physical methods. He's been looking at chemical dynamics and laser spectroscopy, and especially for several years now, he's been one of the world pioneers in developing ultra-fast X-ray diffraction. X-ray diffraction, diffraction is a classical topic in, in, uh, in chemistry where, that you use to find the structure of crystals. But this is always, has always been done in a static mode. You don't get dynamics, you get a static structure. But now the vision has been for several years how to use these methods that are very good to precisely follow the movements of atoms, to get time-resolved information, to really follow chemical reaction. And this is what uh, uh, Jan has been doing with colleagues in solution. And uh, they have uh, for example, looked at very small molecules like diodomethane, but also large molecules like uh, bacterial reaction centers and bacterial rhodopsin. Uh, uh, so large proteins by X-ray diffractions in solution. So in my group, I think uh, Stemion, you have already given a talk? Yes. Yes. So you heard about uh, artificial photosynthesis and we work in collaboration with Stemion and other groups to work on the synthetic side where we try to mimic uh, the natural reactions of photosynthetic reaction centers where light is being harvested and, uh, and uh, the excited state energy is used to drive electrons to a catalyst and take electrons from another catalyst that then split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And especially we're working on trying to control these reactions. Because one, you need four electrons to get four, four uh, to, get to split water. So you need four uh, uh, photons to come in and couple them to four, to four holes for water chemistry. And this has not been done efficiently under many principal mechanisms that are not understood how to couple these reactions. So it's like having a gear switch from one electron chemistry here to two electron chemistry here and four electron chemistry there. An important part of that is to control electrons and protons together, which uh, I've been working on for several years. And uh, here, here I show, a pay, uh, this is a cover of next week's Journal of American Chemical Society, where we have a molecule, which is actually a tyrosine that you find in natural photosynthesis and many other proteins. This we have incorporated with a colleague in the United States. She has made a very nicely well-defined uh, well a uh, model protein uh, that is structurally characterized and uh, we have been sh uh, showing that by photochemical technique we can photooxidize this and make a very very stable tyrosine radical and this helps us to understand uh, how these tyrosine radicals work in nature and how you and then we're going to manipulate the environment here to manipulate and understand better its reactivity so these are the kinds of things uh, that we are doing in physical chemistry here in Uppsala today and uh, I started by showing what physical chemistry is in contrast to what was previously done in chemistry. I mean, there's always a reason, a background why a new field emerges. But today, these old disciplines are, of course, mixing. If you, if you invent words like bioinorganic physical chemistry, then you realize that the disciplines are really mixed to a large extent. But uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was all. I think there's uh, what, what I showed here that many of these topics that we work on today are of course uh, front topics. Physical chemistry didn't stop here or here. This looks like old guys and what they did then, we know. But this is what we're doing today. And uh, one, one, thing, one thing I can promise you is that however clever we are, we're not gonna exhaust the topic. There's always gonna be a lot of more interesting things to do. Okay.